Hi, this is Sarah Mikesel with thepigsite.com, and today we're here with Dr. Scott D. He is the Director of Research and Development with Pipestone Veterinary Services. So thanks for being with us today, Scott. Good to see you, Sarah. Uh, today we're here at the uh, North American Purse Conference, and I understand you presented to the group today. Can you tell us a little bit about your, the research and, um, and some of the information you presented today? Well, today we talked about the ability of African swine fever virus to move from continent to continent in contaminated feed, which is a direct link to the work we did in 2014 on PDD virus along the same lines. That's what we focused on today was ASF, but it goes back to the original work with PDD. Very good. So tell me a little bit about the original work maybe to start with and, mm -hmm. and then how that all links together if you could. Our veterinary group at Pipestone back in 2014 was wondering how PED entered the U.S. and we had never had that virus before in our continent. And we started looking in mills and finding bags of feed ingredients that were from China. And the scientists had said that the virus most likely had come from China based on fingerprinting, so to speak. And so we started thinking, could it be possible that this virus, PED, enter the United States via contaminated feed ingredients from China. And we set up a model to test that. Very good. So so making that taking that information and then and then the new research that you've done, take us now to the next step. Sure. So the model clearly showed with PED that certain ingredients supported the virus very well through a simulated journey from say Beijing to Shanghai to San Francisco to Des Moines. And we wanted to see if other viruses could survive that journey as well. So we developed a model that had representative transport time, representative environmental conditions, uh, timetable from place to place that matched up, as well as ingredients that we bring in from China. So we kind of made a, a CSI, if you look at it that way, to kind of understand could viruses actually move other than PED from uh, Asia to the uh, United States. And clearly, uh, African swine fever, in my opinion, uh, could easily do that based on our data. Very good. And what other uh, what other diseases have you looked at? Well, we've looked at a total of 12 viruses now, with the help of South Dakota State University and Kansas State University. All of this being funded by the Swine Health Information Center, so we have to recognize those groups for their support and expertise. We've looked at 12 viruses, PED being one, African swine fever being another. We've also looked at surrogates for foot and mouth disease virus as well. So there's a long list that we may not have time to talk about today, but as far as the real focus of this presentation was African swine fever. Very good. And, and when you talk about modeling it, um, you haven't actually found African swine fever in feed, you haven't actually tested it, right? I mean, this is a model, in other words, right? Exactly. This is a simulation. It's a, a kind of a trying to recreate the crime scene. However, the Chinese have found African swine fever virus in feed in China. So we know as the outbreak grows in China, the risk of contamination of pig feed goes up. So it looks like if you start to test, you might find something. And a lot of, uh, of feed ingredients are coming to the United States, right, from China every day, correct? It's amazing. Um, very few people realize that we import 2 million metric tons of agricultural products a year from the country of China. So grains, meat products, vitamins, amino acids, antibiotics, the list goes on and on. It's, it's amazing what global trade has done in the, in the recent past to kind of make a spider web almost around the world. And, and those, those um, ingredients that are coming in right now are not being tested for African swine fever then? No, at this time the USDA has not allowed testing to be a routine procedure. But you never know, they might start sampling certain batches in an experimental sense, which I think is a good idea. My concern is, though, it's going to take a lot of samples before you might find the one positive batch, because I think this is kind of a needle in the haystack situation. Very good. Well, it's, it's part of, uh, it sounds like the research you were doing was really 
helping to assess the risk, right? What we, what we looked at is, could the virus survive this journey? In other words, could the virus be transported by a feed ingredient or several ingredients from country to country? Which it could, it survived very well. And uh, now what Megan Niederwerder has done from Kansas State is to look at whether the transmission of the virus from feed to pigs could occur, which was a great piece that she prevent, uh, presented um, in conjunction with my talk. And, and her findings um, then are also available to others uh, as part of this. Um, but could you give just a few highlights from that as well? Well, Megan is a wonderful scientist. I think she's one of the best we have in the country. And she's doing a great job with her team to show that, yeah, the, the virus could be transmitted uh, through feed to pig to pig. Now, her results are under review for peer review publication, so I have to be careful in what I say. And she'd be a good person to talk to. But it was amazing how well our data on transport segued into her data on transmission. That's, that's like connecting the dots. We, we've never gotten that far yet. So congrats to her. Interesting. Great stuff. Well, thanks yeah. again, Scott. We appreciate all the information today. My pleasure. Thank you, Sarah. This is Sarah Mike Soul reporting live from the North American Purse Conference.